as I was getting cut off at the end of the second video, wow, that's pretty bad, doesn't it? Um, I was o I was opening the can of worms of apostasy. That is, if it is really impossible for a true Christian to lose their salvation, why are there so many professing ex-Christians today? This is a very important question with respect to eternal security. And what I'm going to say here uh, shouldn't be construed, should not be construed as the complete and final answer. It's just uh, uh, one man groping, uh, you know, to try to make sense, uh, to make consistency of his, his thought, his, uh, the thoughts in his mind. And there is a lot of emotion involved here. Some ex-Christians really had a hard time transitioning to a new view of life. And I don't want to presume to know the reason why you are no longer uh, a Christian if you uh, happen to be uh, an ex-Christian. I don't want to say that there are... Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't read that word, but... Uh, <laughs> which is kind of scary because it's it's typed. Um, but uh, I, I, I can't read people's hearts, obviously, uh, so um, I, I don't want to come off as though I was saying that. Um, so, so I'm issuing this disclaimer at the beginning. Rather, all I want to do now, as I said, is to explore the issue of apostasy on the intellectual level, as opposed to the emotional, uh, to see if I can make sense of it relative to my belief in the perseverance of the saints. So I have a, a belief. I'm trying to make sense out of it uh, with respect to other things that I see, anomalies, if you will. And uh, again, this is not uh, the final or the complete answer, uh, but it's a possibility, uh, hypothetically speaking. All right, so if I hold tenaciously to eternal security, how am I to understand professing ex-Christians, people that... Uh, and there's many of them that were Christians uh, at one time, uh, perhaps uh, uh, a pastor, perhaps in a church, uh, but now they um, no longer uh, believe in God. And there's many examples we could we could think of. Um, alrighty, uh, it seems the only possibility is that these people and I want to consider this in the abstract without applying it to any actual person. It seems that if eternal security is true, then ex-Christians were apparently not really truly Christian in the first place. This is the only logical conclusion that can be drawn so far as I can see. That's not quite true, though another possibility is that they still are Christian, but mistakenly think they are not. Uh, so, so this is a strictly logical consideration and not emotional or personal in any way against any individual. If once saved, always saved is true, and I've tried to show that it is, there just can't be apostates uh, in the sense of somebody who becomes a Christian at one point and then at a later point uh, leaves the faith. But let's back up for a minute and describe precisely what a Christian is, what makes a person to be a Christian or to be not a Christian. Uh, the basic idea of a Christian qua Christian is that the individual follows Christ, a Christ follower if and only if a Christian. A Christ follower is a Christian, a Christian is a Christ follower. Uh, those are equivalent uh, terms, Christ follower and Christian. But what does it mean to follow Christ? You see, the word Christian is thrown around a lot without normally specifying uh, precisely what is meant by the term, and that breeds confusion. Following Christ. Uh, that statement consists of two words, the word following and the word Christ, of course. Uh, we'll take them in reverse order. Who, then, is Christ? Very briefly, Christ is the second person of the Holy Trinity, or God the Son, who was incarnated as a man, or rather the God-man, hypostatic union, as theologians would say. This God-man lived and died for us, shedding his blood on the cross and rising again on the third day. And all of this uh, is according to the scriptures, to use the uh, creedal uh, 
statement from Corinthians, uh, according to the scriptures. The Jesus of Christianity is this Jesus and not another. When many people speak of Jesus Christ, they have a very different understanding than the one listed th th than the understanding that I just mentioned. If Jesus is understood in a radically different way from the brief description I just gave, it is not uh, Jesus who is in view, not the Jesus of Christianity anyhow. The correct and only valid understanding of Jesus is informed by the correct interpretation of Scripture as explicated or hammered out by the ecumenical creeds in the patristic church. Now, I'm using a lot of technical jargon here. Uh, the fancy vocabulary, the, the church speak, if, if you want to call it that, is not what's important. What is important is the meaning behind the vocabulary. Uh, so it's possible that you are a Christian, but you're unfamiliar with this terminology. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're not a Christian. It just means you, you, don't, you haven't learned these words yet. But I hope that you're beginning to see how complex the question of what makes a Christian a Christian is. It's not simply a matter of professing some vague religious affiliation. Now on to the second, or rather the first word of the expression, uh, following. What does it mean to follow? Does it mean simply to agree that there is, was, or may have been such a person as the follower is said to follow? Clearly not. But admitting existence is a necessary component by the follower of a followee. We can't truly follow Jesus unless there is a Jesus to follow. So we need to believe in him in that sense. But we also have to do what he says if we are to follow in his footsteps. We need to do the sorts of things he did and behave in the sorts of ways that are pleasing to him, uh, though they are not necessarily they are not necessarily the ways that are pleasing uh, to us. Um, but uh, as time goes on, of course, we become more Christ-like and and want to do these things. All right, so included under this second point uh, of following Jesus, uh, uh, doing the things that he wants us to do, not doing the things he wants us to not do, behaving in a Christ-like way, included under that is the life of the mind. That is, our thinking is also under the lordship of Jesus if we are truly following him. Every area of our life is infected by Christ, or at least in process of becoming infected by him, uh, if we can legitimately be called his followers. Uh, so we're not perfect right uh, at the beginning, uh, and probably at any point subsequent to that, prior to heaven, uh, perhaps, but uh, uh, we are being sanctified as time goes on uh, by Jesus. With this fuller vision of what it means to be a Christian, we can see that it is possible for a person to believe in God, per se, and also be actively involved in church activities, and yet at the same time not truly be a saved, born-again Christian. Uh, so we'll pick, pick it up there in video number four. Thank you.